Do you know the female equivalent of Albert Einstein? No? Then let me introduce you to Emmy Noether today. In the judgment of the most competent living mathematician, Fräulein Noether was the most significant creative mathematical genius thus far produced since the higher education of women began, wrote Albert Einstein himself in the New York Times in 1935 after Emmy Noether died of complications from an operation. Although even Einstein remembered her mathematical brilliance, the talented scientist was forgotten. She was one of the best representatives of her guild and if science and society had been just a little more open to women at the beginning of the 20th century and not as chauvinistic as some STEM subjects still represent themselves today, Emmy Noether might be a similar idol to Einstein today. In fact, some parallels can be found. Just like Einstein, Emmy Noether came from a Jewish family. Born in Germany in 1882 as the daughter of a mathematician, her family attached great importance to Emmy's education. Like Einstein, she was inclined towards leftist and pacifist thought and had to leave Nazi Germany. And like the inventor of the theory of relativity, she attached little importance to her appearance and was considered somewhat eccentric. She did not care about manners and ladylike behavior, but while Einstein became the first scientific superstar of the 20th century, too many external circumstances led to a different fate for Emmy Noether. It all began when the 18-year-old, who had trained as a language teacher, for girls' schools, of course, wanted to listen to mathematics lectures at university in 1900. At that time, women were only allowed to attend as guest lecturers. She was one of two women who were granted an exception. Thus, she was allowed to mingle as an exotic among the approximately thousand male students. She was even able to do doctorate with summa cum laude and was the second German woman at the German University in Mathematics with a doctorate. She remained employed at the University in Erlangen, but she did not receive any pay, as these positions were withheld from her male colleagues. When David Hilbert, probably the greatest mathematician in the world at the time, tried to get Noether a professorship in Göttingen, the responsible ministry refused. The reason? There has never been a female professor and we don't do that here. It was only after the First World War that an academic career was open to women. In 1919, after years of habilitation, Emmy Noether was finally able to give lectures under her own name. However, this was again unpaid, as a private lecturer. After the hyperinflation, she received a meager salary, without which she would otherwise have starved. From here on, her scientific career took off. They founded a kind of club at the University in Göttingen called the Noether Boys. With them, she further developed essential parts of algebra. It is significant in this context that Emmy Noether transformed the entire subject area in such a way that she founded a new algebraic tradition, abstract or modern algebra. In the following so-called rings, ideals and modules were introduced into mathematics, which served as abstractions of numbers and function spaces. For Noether herself, however, these were not abstractions, but objects of her direct contemplation. She could only think in terms, not in formulas, and that was precisely her strength a former student said about her. In 1928-29, Emmy Noether took on a visiting professorship in Moscow. When she returned from the Soviet Union, she spoke very positively about the situation there, which is why the National Socialists accused her of being a communist. Because she made no secret of her sympathy for the Soviet Union, the fact that she was Jewish, a pacifist and socialist Noether was one of the first to lose her position at the university in 1933. Fran got her a teaching position at the American Bryn Mawr College, an all-women's university. She also gave lectures in Princeton, where Albert Einstein, who had also emigrated, had moved. 
In Göttingen, Bryn Mawr and Princeton, she had great influence on so many scientists and they said the following about her. Completely unegoistical and free of vanity, she never claimed anything for herself but promoted the works of her students above all. Emmy Noether died two years after her arrival in the US, 53 years old. Today, her name is practically only familiar to scientists in the field of mathematics, where many terms and theories are named after her. Besides that, a lunar crater is named after her, but it is on the backside of the moon. She was admired by her colleagues in her lifetime. Later, her contribution got forgotten, but today Aminuta's work is considered a milestone in the world of algebra and theoretical physics. Let's talk more about the great people who have been accidentally or willfully forgotten and get inspired by them. They deserve to be remembered.